And now this here is also a top performer uh, in the squash section, but this is a old world uh, summer squash, and it is the patty pan squash. And uh, I got exceptional germination off of this, as well as just it growing so well. Best best germination, as well as best uh, pollination, because I got like one, this guy's beautiful, one of those, two, three, is there any more in there? Is there any more? Oh. So I got three right there. There's a fourth. Oop. New one. I swear I had some other ones right over here, but maybe animals got them. Oh, there's a fifth. Oh, yeah, there's guys. There's a new one attempting to come, which uh, I I wouldn't be surprised if it got fertilized. I might even help it along if I need it. Oh, here's one. Six, possibly a seventh. And then Nate, if you count the other one that might be coming. So, uh, seven, seven, eight, nine, give or take. Possibly some more, depending on what gets pollinated. I do think I lost a few. But I, they left no trace. Whatever ate it. I do have rodents in here, screwing around occasionally. And, uh, the, uh, this is the remnants of my pumpkin that didn't go anywhere. Just kind of, it had one going, but something made it, and it's basically over after that, so. And over here is the yellow squash, which might have pollinated in with some of that over there, although they are a little bit away from each other, but, you know, we'll see later. Whatever seed I save, I'm going to keep separate and test it next year. But there was a couple in here, and some rodents kept on getting them. Oh, God, that one got broken. Yeah. Um, there's one in there that looks good, but we'll see if it ever gets to maturity, you know. So, yeah. There's another one. Because I just want seed, you know. I could, uh, I could eat these, sure, but I just want seed for next year. I'm trying to see what works, but doesn't, so. I need them to see how they go to maturity. Or else it's kind of pointless. There's those. And on the, on the other hand, with the summer squash, this isn't my best producer, but it is the best producer among the yellow squash, which is just this one guy, and this vine got, got itself pollinated, um, did well underneath these conditions because this was very dry uh, this year, it, and it uh, it uh, fertile er, what do they call it? It uh, germinated good, so, and I think it's gonna it's gonna get mature enough. I, I could probably almost take it out, but I don't want it to keep growing, and get a little bigger, and that'll be some seed that I save for next year. But between that and the patty pan, or mainly that patty pan, did pretty dang good. And I'm going to have a lot more of it next year. And next year, those new genetics that come through will be even more advantageous to what we're trying to do here. Growing plants with essentially zero effort because there's lots of other things you got to do. And nature should be something that works with you, you know. Not something you have to throw exceptional amounts of energy into. Oh, look at that. Those would be nice. And they'll probably get pollinated. You know, that's the interesting thing is that if these do get hybridized with the yellow squash, that's a desirable hybrid that I'll be able to play with next year and possibly develop from there. So, no, this is why I, I took the chance to plant them close together knowing that might happen. So, good news, good news. So we got patty pan and the Hubbards that we showed in another video. Those get a good reputation for me under this scenario. I think next year I'm gonna try some Kuris and some various other uh, hardy heirloom squashes for the winter squash side, because I definitely want more winter squash, and I think I could have done better. I also am gonna look into getting some various pumpkin variety seeds, so look forward to that. I know I am. Anyway, thank you guys. See you later.